Do you need to add localization or internationalization to your React app? If so, you're in luck, because today I'm gonna to show you a step-by-step -step guide on connecting i18 Next, a localization library, with React. In addition to that, I'll show you how to automatically detect locales and lazily load their translation files from a public directory. There's a lot to cover, so let's get into it. Hey, I'm Chantastic, a storybook engineer, and I'm here to help you become a storybook pro. If you'd like to level up your UI engineering game, subscribe for more tips and tutorials from me. For this tutorial, we're working from a storybook that I prepared beforehand. Now, I only added two files, a welcome message component and a story to present it inside of storybook. You can pause right here if you want to replicate those inside of your own code base. React i18 Next has great documentation and a really great getting started guide. We'll walk through the steps of that guide, which I've posted a link to in the description below. Let's install it now. Add both the i18 Next core library and React i18 Next adapter library to your app. Then update the component definition to use the T function that we'll get from React i18 Next and wrap our default text inside of it. Then grab that T function from the use translation hook. And finally import use translation from React i18 Next. We won't see any changes at this point, and that's a good thing. The library is set up and it's using that text that we have in there as the default presentation when it can't locate a translation. Open up the console in your dev tools and you'll see a helpful message. Uh, you will need to pass in an i18 next instance by using init react i18 next. So we need to add some config. Let's paste the starting config from our i18 next getting started guide. Here we notice a few things we're importing init React i18 next, the function we were told to import from React i18 next. Uh, we're then configuring i18n, which we import here, to use init React i18 next, and then initialize with the following configuration. We set the language to default to English, and then a fallback language of English, and then a single translation file for English. Finally, we're using the welcome to React text as a key to access this translation. And now that the use translation hook has something to find, we see that this message is now replacing our default message in the story. I18 Next has a debugging mode that allows you to see events logged out in the DevTools console. It's the best way to see what's happening behind the scenes in your I18 Next React app. Enable the debugging mode with the option debug true. Save that. And now we can see event logs and warnings from the I18 Next library. Let's add a translation for another language. We'll use Arabic because it has non-Latin characters and is a really good counterpoint to our English translation. Replicate the English translation, change the language code to AR, add an Arabic language translation, and note that it still uses the welcome to React key. Hit save and test it out. Change our language property from EN to AR. And just like that, welcome to React in Arabic. Having translations inside of the JavaScript portion of your application will absolutely balloon your bundle size. To lazily load these, we have a package called i18 next HTTP backend. Add the i18 next HTTP backend dependency. Import backend from i18 next HTTP backend. Then use that backend in our configuration comment out the whole resource block that we have defined here and hit save. Then refresh storybook. With debugging enabled, we'll see everything that i18 next attempted to do. Most notably, it attempts to get both translations from the backend at the location locales, locale, translation.json. In both cases, it fails. It defaults back to the welcome to react translation key. Let's fix this. Most frameworks have a public directory. In this folder is a bunch of files that get duplicated into your builds. Because we're using Storybook as our front end workshop environment, we need to configure it to serve our public files. We do that in package.json. Jump down to scripts and use the S flag 
to serve the public directory. You'll want to do this in both the storybook and build storybook scripts. This requires a restart, so close this file and restart our storybook server with control C and then yarn storybook. Now add the requisite translation files to a locales directory inside of public. Locales, AR, translation, dot JSON. If we open this side by side with our welcome message, we can just grab this translation block, copy and paste it over. We'll do the same thing for English. Open our sidebar again, add a new directory and translation file for English, translation.json. Paste in what we copied, hit save. With our two new translation files, we can get rid of this whole block in our configuration. Refresh storybook. Now test this out by changing the default language. Right now it's Arabic, we can change this back to English. Up to this point, we've explicitly controlled the language that we'd like to see represented, but that's not particularly useful when we're introducing localization. We'd like to detect the user's language and then load the translation file for that language. To test language detection, let's disable the language property and change the fallback language to Arabic or something that's not the native language of the machine. Add i18 next browser language detector to your project. Install it and set it up by importing language detector from i18 next browser language detector. Finally, set it up with a, another use language detector. Now, a feature of React i18 next language detector is that it will cache the results of the language for 10 minutes by default. So at this point, if you're stuck seeing English, open up your application, local storage pane, and just delete the last cache results. Now, when we remove the language detector, here our cache, we'll see Arabic, and with the language detector enabled, clear the cache again, we'll see English. By default, i18next is set up with a single instance, and at the moment, that instance lives inside of this React component. Let's extract that instance to a single file that we can share between our storybook environment and our application environment. Create a new file in a source folder, Call it i18next.js. Let's open this side by side. Cut and paste the i18 setup function with all of its imports and hit save. Now in our application root, we want to import this file. In our storybook environment, that will be dot storybook slash preview js. Import source i18next. You can see that without the import, we get the default representation using our fallback text. And with the import, we actually see our English translation. IETNX can also detect when a language should be presented right to left instead of left to right. Let's set up in our application a way to handle that change when we identify it for both languages. First, we need to export our I18N instance. Then we can import it from Preview.js. This allows us to make modifications to it in the context of Preview, which has access to this document. On our i18next instance, add an event handler for the language changed event. Here we'll get a locale. We'll use an i18next function called dir to get the direction of that locale's language, assign that to a local variable direction. Finally, update the document.direction with direction. Now we can change the language to see this in action. With English, we see left to right. If we change this to Arabic, we'll see right to left. If you have questions about integrating IET Next, React, and Storybook, leave them in the comments below. Even better yet, join our Discord server of almost 15,000 awesome Storybook developers. They have 
answers for almost anything you can think of. In our next video, I'll show you how you can integrate a language selector dropdown into the Storybook toolbar, and that'll show up right here. However, until then, I'll show you just a bunch of other cool things that you can do inside of the Storybook toolbar. You can find links to everything mentioned in this tutorial in the description below. I'm Chantastic. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.